Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Retro Gamers Podcast, episode number 382, Larry here. And Anthony here. And what is going on, sir? Well, 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 well not much, you know, it's uh, it's uh, pitch black out here right now. Um, we're recording on, uh, well actually we're both recording on the same day, right? It's Saturday. We are, yes. We were going to think it's about Saturday. doing it, uh, what, just 12 hours ago, which would have been two totally different things. Yeah, which would have been two different days, which would have been fun. But yeah. yes, uh, all is well. I am I am halfway around the world. Okay. Um, in uh, in uh, very very hot and humid Singapore. Oh, I can only imagine during summer Singapore in the summer. Yikes. Oh yes, um, the the sun is hot and the showers are plentiful. So <laughs> that because that really helps the heat. Well, no. Basically, what you do is you go you go outside, and if you're outside for more than five minutes, you come back and take a shower. Oh, That's yikes! Kinda, kinda oh, thanks. You got um, a bunch of jellyfish but, on the wall behind you. Uh, no, that well, that that is actually a um, a peacock pattern oh. on the wall of my hotel room. Okay, fair enough. You know, for those who like peacock around. feathers, why not? Maybe peacock owns the uh, the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> maybe i don't know um but uh yeah but no um all is well here things are things are going great good um you know my travels are going well excellent and and most importantly i you know um i didn't i didn't have to fly when uh, everything went down on friday <laughs> honestly right there yeah, that were so for for those who i don't know how you wouldn't know unless you're living under a rock uh yeah microsoft uh was down for the day uh on friday Oopsie. this past friday and mm -hmm. um, I think it impacted Xbox as well. I think uh, maybe not, maybe not as much. Okay. But um, it was. I would, it was... I would like to think. I would like to think it impacted Xbox because if it if they if they had to like um, if they had to like cancel three thousand flights and yet Microsoft Xbox Live was still working, there's a problem there. <laughs> <laughs> Little priority issue. Uh, well, I think it all depends on also what what might have. I don't think Xbox is running. Hopefully, a proprietary. Um, software that was the impact mm. and that one dude i don't know the guy's name but he had the worst job in history on friday when he had to go because it wasn't it wasn't a cyber attack it was not a terrorist thing it was just a simple terrible mistake with an upgrade a uh, total yep. software glitch and yeah, total, I, total software glitch that person i'm sure is now looking for another job and will it will not be in it <laughs> be, yeah because he had to go on and tell the world Yes. Sorry. My bad. We had a zero where a one is or something. I don't know. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a deep cut, but uh I'm gonna blame zero cool and acid burn for this one. <laughs> so where's that from? Dang it, I don't know that reference. <laughs> I know. Is that from hackers? <laughs> yes. Wow. Oh, what a pull. Okay, pull. that took me a minute. I haven't seen hackers in a minute. Good so pull. that oh my yeah. god. That one of my me. one of my one of my favorite movies from the nineties. I probably seen half of it once a long time ago. That's it. Wow, you got to go I, back yeah, and never... watch it. It is. It, you want you know you know there are some movies that need to exist in the in the year. Basically, oh, of that course. Yeah. All right. That that is that is definitely Hackers. Who was um, in Hackers? Why didn't I watch Hackers? That no, was ever... Johnny Lee. Mil that was Johnny Lee Miller and Angelina Jolie. That's yeah, where would... they met. Oh, okay. Yeah, man, they got they got married. That was uh, their first, you know, their first big, their first marriage. <laughs> um, oh, Matthew but, Lillard. That's probably why. Matthew, and, and I knew Matthew, Matthew Lillard was in it. Matthew it's, Lillard played serial killer. Yeah, if he if he's not Shaggy, as in Fruit Loops, <laughs> if he's not Shaggy. I'm not watching it. Uh, it looks like Xbox Live was affected during the outage. So that's that, very interesting. That would, yeah, that would definitely make sense. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, but everything's back up and running. Of course, nothing. I was able to still work, so it didn't affect me whatsoever. Did it affect and you I at all? A, period. Uh, no, did it affect me here? No, I was okay. uh, where? Where was? I don't know where it was yesterday. Oh uh, yeah, yesterday I was uh, gallivanting around uh, theme park. <laughs> <laughs> No so, need to uh, go online well there. Good. All right. Excellent. No, definitely, well, it, definitely not. I was visiting some, you know, some friends. Good. Good. <laughs> some, some interesting friends, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, some very <laughs> unique friends. Banana. Uh, all right. So, um, you're in Singapore. Did you get a chance to go shopping? And I know this is a rhetorical question, but for the people at home who don't, always, know. 
Yes. No, no, no. I, I always take the opportunity to go shopping if I have an, if I have a day um, to get out there. And uh, I did go shopping today and I went to the same place I've been to the last two times I've been in Singapore. Um, like a little the, strip mall uh, almost. Uh, no, it's not, it's not a strip mall. Oh. It's an in, it's an indoor six story mall. Oh, um, called uh, Sim Lim Square. Okay. And every store inside the mall is tech. It's all tech. Wow. Um, I didn't realize so, all of it was tech like that. Yeah, no, 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 the whole thing, the whole thing is just tech themed. So, and you know, you need a, uh, you, you're looking for video games. They have stores for that. You're looking for computer, you know, your PC gamer. They got that stuff. Just general computer needs. They got that. They have audio, they have audio equipment, everything you can think of. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so I hit up Simulum Square. Uh, there are four shops in there that I normally frequent. Um, one of them I could not find this time. <laughs> oh, oh no. Um, well, because the problem is there's, there are so many stores that the only way I can find the ones that I'm looking for, are I have to look them up on Google Maps and then Google Maps will tell you their address because mm -hmm. every store has like um, a little address number on it. Mm -hmm. So and I could only find three of them. One of them I one of them I always know where it is because it's in the it's in the basement and it's the only store like right it's like as soon as you come in from the parking garage it's right there. Okay. So um so and I did have a I did have a a goal um this time while I was here because since I'm in Asia and the timing is absolutely perfect I wanted to get my hands on the um the special edition of the NES World Championship. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Out because the um because the Japanese version has a special edition that comes with two Famicom controllers, yeah. comes with a pin set. So, and that released on July 18th. So, I thought I'd go perfect opportunity. I'm here, I'm in Singapore, let me go find it. So, first store I stopped at was a uh, G&E Gaming. Okay. Um and this guy, su uh, you know, super nice guy. I last time I Last time I went to his store, he was really, really cool. We talked about, we talked about stuff. I didn't mind up buying anything from him last time because he only had like a, a, a handful of retro games. Okay. But um, while I was there this time, he try uh, he while well, he was trying to sell me the um, oh, what's the name of it? I, I sent you pictures of these things, wow. which I'm sure yeah. you're gonna pop, you gotta throw up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, he was showing off the new Ann Burnick. I don't know how to say it. And Bernick, A N B E R N I C. It um, it's a handheld. It looks okay. like a it looks it looks like a mini version of the Switch, and it's loaded with oh. retro games. Yeah. So he was showing it off to me, and it had it had on it basically every eight bit system, every sixteen bit system. Had Game Boy, okay. Game Gear. Um, I don't think it had. I don't think it had like PlayStation stuff. He did show me N64 on there, which I thought was oh, interesting because wow. I was looking, but I was looking at the controls and I'm like, I don't know how you're going to play N64 with these controls. It would have been kind of weird. <laughs> um, but, you know, it was really cool. It was really impressive. It was preloaded okay. with all the games on it, which was kind of cool. Um, and it wasn't that expensive either, but I just, I don't need another, another handheld. I have my, I have my switch. You, I have what? my, I have my steam deck. What handhelds do you have? I don't count those two as handhelds. Those are handhelds to me. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, so anyway, so uh, so I went to him and I was talking to him and I told him, I said, well, I go, I'm, I'm looking for the NES World Championship Edition that just came out. Mm -hmm. um, and he's like, oh, yeah, he's like, I have copies, but he had the regular copy. So I said, no, I said, I'm looking for the special edition with the Famicom controllers. Uh, oh, which... he was selling. He was selling the game just by itself. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know it was available by itself. I thought it only came either digital or the special edition. That's no, interesting. No, 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 no. You could buy you can buy a regular copy <laughs> because full disclosure, full disclosure, I pre-ordered the regular copy from um, Best Buy. Oh, that wasn't so. You didn't order the special edition. You just ordered the game. I didn't even realize that was available like that. Okay, okay, interesting. No, I, yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure <laughs> I just got a standard copy. How much was well, it? I, I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> Um, but I thought what I pre-ordered was a standard edition. Let's just say, okay. let's just All say right. that. Well, I guess you'll okay. find out when you get home. I will find out when I get home. <laughs> so anyway, so, um, yeah, cause it, it did deliver. So he told me, you know, 
oh, you know, he had the regular copy. I said, I'm looking for the special edition. And he said, oh, he's like, the um, the special edition isn't going to be here until July 25th because ah. has to be imported. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, okay, so bummer. And I'm not going to be here mm -hmm. that, you know, until the 25th. So unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I miss, I'm going to miss my opportunity to get it. I don't think you're going to miss yeah. out on that because I still I think the games themselves and the challenges are going to be the same uh, between the two. Yeah. Um, the only difference, of course, will be that that packaging and, of course, the, the controllers, course. which I think I heard uh, that Nintendo will sell the Famicom, not the U.S. version, not the North American, but the Famicom controllers might mm -hmm. be on sale to the general public soon by yeah. themselves. So if you're looking to get it, because we're going to talk right. about that in a, in a few moments uh, with the World Championship, but continue on. Yeah. Um, but anyway, just to finish that little bit of the story, once I once I figured out I wasn't gonna get it here, mm -hmm. I just saved myself the I saved myself the trouble and I, I bought a copy on eBay. Uh so I am getting <laughs> I am getting I am getting a copy of I am getting a copy of the Japanese version. Good. And, the, to, and to be honest with you, the uh the, the price on eBay wasn't bad. So Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Well the, the price I would order, yeah, and, and ordering it from Japan with and I think I got free shipping. Which yeah, great. that's I don't know how that works. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I have no idea. So, um, so anyway, um, so I went, you know, so I finished up at GE Gaming. I wound up not buying anything there. Okay. Um, and then, um, my next stop on the way up was I think I went to uh, Claw Dr. Clotopus again. I love this place. I, I, I this would be like the first, yes. shockingly, would be the first place I would go to if I was there. Yeah, so it's it's literally just a store that ha is unmanned. There was nobody there, and there's just a, there's just a bunch of claw games. And the funny thing about it this time around, because I remember the last time I was here and I went in there, it was kind of sad because a <laughs> lot of the claw it, no a lot of the claw games were kind of empty. Oh, okay. and I was like, oh, I was like, this is weird. I go, well, you know, it's it's a lot of winners. Yeah, yeah, either a lot of winners or the person running the place doesn't even care to to fill them up. <laughs> so. And walking in there, I was like, okay, I go, let me check out what's here and I'll see what's going on. And then I'm like, okay. I was like, this is just weird. I've never seen claw games like this before. So uh, I sent you a couple of pictures where yep. one claw game that I found was loaded up with like potato chips. Oh, I've like, seen just, those. Yeah. Yeah. Like just bags of chips. And I'm like, wait, wait a minute. And I go, why would I want to gamble? and try to win a bag of chips. Like, I can just go to the store and get a bag of chips. You know what I mean? And then there was another machine that had drinks in it. Yeah, like that- just and, bot like bottled water and stuff. And I'm and, like, well, and that's kind of weird. I say this with absolute all due respect. I just think that's like a cultural thing where like Maybe. over in Asia, they just, they love these games. You can put anything mm -hmm. in there. And cause I've seen on yep. YouTube, uh, some wacky stuff, especially like those giant lollipops and everything mm -hmm. that are in there. So I think that's just, they just enjoy the game so much they'll just put yeah. anything in it instead of going to a vending machine they'll try and win a bag of chips so yeah exactly so i just thought that was weird but then when you say they'll put anything in it yeah i saw this my, yeah my favorite machine that i saw there this time was it was a uh, it was a, a claw machine filled with toilet paper yeah um i mean our I, look, you know, if this was four years ago in the height of the pandemic, they could have gotten seven dollars a pull oh, yeah. on this thing when, for some reason, toilet paper yeah. started running out. But, but it, yeah, was it like a a shortage over there or something? Like, what no, is... no, there's no shortage. <laughs> it was it was um it was printed toilet paper. I don't know what it was printed on it, but like it had like some oh, cartoonish okay. stuff on it. Okay, yeah. So you were so you were getting a special roll. Of okay, toilet paper. and and for those listening at home, I'm putting the picture up and. You might want to pause this on this one. The sticker that's on the claw machine for the toilet paper, mm -hmm. it, it's for, the game is called Let It Roll. Yes, it's called Let It Roll. Twelve tries, sure win. One roll equals one point. And wait, is there prizes in the middle? Oh, no, they can't. I'm reading that wrong. But nevertheless, it it that is hysterical. Let it roll. And there's something else here on a post-it. What does it say? One roll is one toilet roll. Uh, I can't read. It's a little hard to read. But yeah, this is the most interesting um, crane game ever. Yeah, definitely. Definitely a, a great crane game. Uh, needless to say, I didn't play. Um, <laughs> you should have. I didn't, didn't want to. Well, that's, that's a souvenir to bring home. Oh, yeah. What'd you bring home? Oh, toilet paper. <laughs> so, yep. So we moved on from that. And then after that one, I went up to... 
my the other store, which was um, Retro Nuts. Oh yes, yeah. Now Retro Nuts, I've been to each time, and I do love the stuff that they have there. No, they definitely got some uh, cool stuff. There I do, are... la I do, la yeah, and I do laugh whenever I go there too because I normally, when I talk to the guy, I always pick out the things that are not for sale. <laughs> Cause I'd be like, Oh, cause it was like, you know, he had that handheld Popeye game that I was going to try and yeah. find. I was trying to find out how much it was. Cause I knew you would want it. And he's like, yeah. Oh no. And he's like, none of those handhelds in the window are for sale. And I'm like, <laughs> well, why are they in your window? Yeah. <laughs> um, but then, but then literally that like five other things I asked for after that, he told me were not for sale. So I'm like, okay. I was like, it's like it be, would be I, quicker. I, just be like, what is for sale? Yeah. Do you have any toilet I paper? He, I think he would just, he's, He's renting out a store just to show off his collection, maybe. I don't blame him. I don't know. But, uh, but you know what? Just, you know, wandered through the store store a bit, looked at some stuff. I did see he had a um, – uh, I know we're going to talk about this later, Larry. Yeah. Because yeah. it's part of our game of the week. But in one of those pictures I sent you, there is a Game & Watch of Donkey Kong Jr. I saw that. That looked beautiful. Yeah. Which is really <gasps> cool. And he's got, he's got a whole bunch of Game & Watches in there. What did you find that made you – He's yes. got a Sega CDX. Yes, he has a Sega the hybrid. CDX. Oh my god, I've that's yep. that like for systems, that's my mm -hmm. holy grail. I've always yeah, uh, wanted that. And I'll probably guarantee you it wasn't for sale. Oh, uh, probably not. Probably not. And there's some weird tape deck next to him trying to figure out what that so again. I'm just looking at the pictures mm -hmm. here. Um, I and this is totally my fault, so I, I blame no one else but myself. But I really should have asked you to see if he had a Game Boy Light. So, oh, I, yeah, again, I totally looked. my fault because I'm looking at it here. He's got the pocket sonar, the sound boy. I don't even know what the sound mm -hmm. boy was. Um, he's got the barcode boy set. I mean, he's got some wild, wild stuff here. Again, who knows yeah, if it's he, for sale or not, but yeah, he has he has a lot of he definitely has a lot of cool stuff, and the store is always worth stopping in. Yeah, so when I was there, I, and I always have a hard time trying to find something there too because there's just you're overwhelmed the or well yeah there's just stuff all over the place um you know a lot of the games are just you know they're in japanese yeah so it's and um on shelves they, he he almost had it uh he had a lot of stuff sideways so like in order to know what oh, was in the okay, box yeah i'd have to take out each box individually yeah and, you know so while I, uh while i was there i saw in one of the cases he had a stack of Super Game Boy 2s, which is brand new. Mm -hmm. And I know you just bought one. I did. So yeah. so I was like, ooh, I was like Super Game Boy 2. I go, let me grab a copy here. But then when he told me the price, I was like, okay, it was it was a little too expensive because the thing the thing to understand about Singapore is that they have to import like all of their goods here. Mm -hmm. Uh kind of like the way Hawaii works. Yeah. So and because of that, everything here tends to be more expensive. So even when you so when you do the even when you do the um uh, the currency exchange, things are still pricier here. So, um, so, and again, not, nothing against them with their prices, but it's like, I know I can get certain things for less money elsewhere. I'm looking, so. I'm looking for it right now on, yeah, um, me too. Uh, Superman. No, super game boy. Uh, let's see. Out of box. I see it. Yeah. Like you, like you just said, 40 yeah, 50, bucks, 40, 36. 50, I when I looked when I when I looked earlier in bo like in box it was like I saw Maybe I don't in know box might be like, different. I pulled it up it was like 260 400 that... and I'm like in box could be because you know how the boxes go. In box yeah, that loose if it's no, more here's than one, well here's one for 99 in box or loose in box. Okay, no, I get the price in box. I can totally understand okay. that in box. Well, you know, I can, I can, I can. Um, well, first off, I can understand it being more expensive here because, and that's the other reason why we'll, we'll talk about it later. Wait, wait, you can, talk about it now. Actually, I can just, I can just move things around on the podcast. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I, I can understand it being expensive here because um, everything here has to be imported. True, but to be. Well, yeah, I guess that's still technically importing from Japan to Singapore, but uh, no, um, it's, yeah, it's definitely importing. Yeah. But still, it's why food here is so expensive. Oh, really? Every well, everything in Singapore gets imported, yeah. <laughs> like Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. That that's pretty much what it's like here. You know, it's funny. I can't even find a Super Game Boy Two in box on eBay. Yeah, like my I mean, breakfast every morning is like fifty bucks. Yeah, so is mine, but for two completely different reasons. Well, yes. <laughs> Something completely, yes. 
All right. So no, no, no. So it's less money in the states. That's fine. Because oh, I, like, I was, I was, yeah, I was tempted to get one until I saw the price of it. Actually, but not even. So now this is what's weird. And then so, because and because the price threw me off, I left the store and I forgot to buy the one game I was going to buy. Oh, what were you going to buy? I found on the, it was sticking out on on one of their shelves for Super Famicom. There was a, a copy of Uno. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, it was like fifteen. It was like fifteen bucks, and I was like, "Oh, I was like, I'm gonna grab this." And then after the Super Game Boy price, I was like, "Uh," and then I went out, and then I left, and I completely forgot that I wanted it on Super Famicom or Famicom. No, Super Famicom. Super had Famicom. It okay. Yeah. Look at this. Right. Look at the, even the bot. Was it in box or was it loose? Out of curiosity. No, it was loose. It was loose. I I was just gonna. I'm gonna send you a link just to show you the inbox. The box alone, I am loving. I mean, there's and there's How fun nothing. Is the box? Oh, trust me, there is nothing. I'm going to send you the uh, the, the thing here in a moment. I really wish I was going to Japan, but because then I'd just be all over Super Potato for that one. Oh, there it is. Uh, actually, I think this is from Super. No, no, this is from somewhere else on eBay. <laughs> oh, you... I want it in box. So how fun! It's only this one. I say it was only thirty two dollars. I think this Uno game might be uh, might be in the for future just... for both of us here shortly. Yes. To... Oh, there's also there's a cheaper. Oh no, never mind. The Japan, the shipping is terrible. There's Uno on. I never realized. Wow, I never realized how many systems Uno has come out on. Uh, mostly all in Japan, of course. Because I don't ever remember a North American I think, release. I don't think they ever carry um, it over here. PS One, Saturn. Uh, I guess that's really it. PS One and Saturn. Oh, Game Boy. This is Uno Two on Game Boy. I gotta figure. I gotta see that one. Uno Two. And it look and it looks like there's some sort of like. Some special. Oh, this is the original Uno on Game Boy, uh, PS2. Wow, Japan got a lot of Unos. That is a st oh, again all, all Good Japanese systems. Yeah, I ne I now need to own Uno on like every system. Right. This is this would be a fun thing to collect. Then I moved on to the last store, which is uh, which was a store called Tech Drome, not Technodrome, Tech Drome. Okay. And so. I, as soon as I got there, there was like uh, what I thought was really weird is I I got there and there was like a line of people inside. It, the picture you took does show yeah. a crowded store and a tiny yeah, store. Yeah, it because it, it's a very tiny store. Uh, you can only fit one person in the little aisles that he has, so yeah, you can barely get a, you can barely get around people. But the last time I was there, I picked up a lot of PC games. And remember, okay. you remember me showing off yep. all those PC games from like yep. you know twenty year old games and stuff like that. So and he had a weird pricing uh, set up for his PC games last time. It was like ten dollars for the first one, nine dollars for the second. Oh one. yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, kept going down to five bucks. So this time I walk in and I'm looking at the PC games, and the guy comes over to me. He's like, you know, he's like, can I help you? I said, well, I'm just looking. He's like, and I'm just like, how much are the PC games? He's like, oh, he's like, they're all five. I'm like, oh, okay. I was like, so now they just cut it straight down to five <laughs> bucks. So I think they're just trying to get rid of them. like not there was. One shelf of stuff that was like more expensive, but then mm -hmm. a lot of common stuff for five bucks. So, and so I just went uh, looking through those, and I wound up picking up um, three PC games. Oh, okay. Uh, to add to my collection. So um, the first one I want to show you, I picked this up just because we just talked about this game um, a couple of weeks ago. I believe it was for our Fourth of July. Um, oh episode where we were talking about remember we were talking about like american you know oh, american yeah. themed games or something yep, like that yep. so they, they had a copy they had a pc copy of all places like i'm sitting oh, in Singapore, no. but they have what a I think pc it is. copy of the political machine oh okay i thought it was a jfk game okay no, 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 okay no. what year is that uh 2008 okay so um so i just thought you know i just thought it would be funny to pick totally. it up because we were just talking about it so totally play it Play as your favorite candidate, uh, Barack Obama, John McCain, yeah, Hillary Clinton, John Edwards, etc. So um, for those of you who know history, it uh, goes back to that. And then you can see how goofy they kind of look. Oh, yeah. It's like cover. it's kind of. Yeah. yeah. It's like all the caricatures, yeah. if you will. Yeah. The cartoonish characters. Cartoonish, so, yeah. Yeah. So so I picked that up just for just for fun. Why not? You know? Yeah. So, I don't blame yeah, you. Why not? So got the political machine. All right. Then. Um, I also grabbed this, which I thought was really cool. Um, it is the Sega Mega Drive Classic Collection Volume One. Ooh, so yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, it's basically our Sega Genesis Classics Collection, mm -hmm. just uh, the Mega Drive PC version. Oh yeah, I mean those collections have been uh, 
given out ad nauseum. Anything of note on there, though? Like, you think that might be, like, um, that wasn't available anywhere else, or they're just 10 standard games? No, it says 10 original games featuring, but then on the cover, there are more, there's more than 10 games. Oh. Or it looks like, it looks like there are more than 10 games. So, um, but what they call out on the box um, are Altered Beast, Comic Zone, Crackdown. I don't know what Crackdown is. Oh, boy, it sounds familiar. Um, Echo the Dolphin, Golden Axe, Shinobi 3, Sonic the Hedgehog, Space Harrier 2, Vector Man, and then another game called Gain Ground, which I also don't know. Oh, yeah, no, Gain Ground. I actually I have Gain Ground. I think I have the arcade version on my Switch. Okay. So those are the 10 games that are on this uh, this volume. This was just volume one, so there were obviously multiple uh, volumes crackdown. of this. Crackdown. I've never I don't I've never heard of Crackdown either. It I'm I'm pulling it up here. Mm. I'll put some pictures on the video. It almost yeah. it looks like I'm not saying it plays like it, but it almost looks like Metal Gear. Oh, interesting. Crackdown is a run and gun arcade game released by Sega in eighty nine and ported to the Mega Drive in night in Japan. Oh, we got it in ninety one. Mm -hmm. um, oh, okay. But nevertheless, all right, something. And it was called Crackdown. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Cool. Well, so then uh, that was that one, and then the last one I got, I um, uh, I went back for a second look through just to make sure before I left, and always have I to missed... go through the second look through. That's why you end yeah. up spending more money. Yeah, and yeah, and well, and I missed this one the first time around, and I'm glad that I went back and looked again because this is one I definitely wanted to add to my collection. But uh, I found a copy of Alice Madness Returns. Oh, nice. You see. Yeah, so very nice. That's really cool. Yeah, I still have to get the the original one. Yep. Um, this is the sequel, but uh, I've yeah I've always wanted to play this game, so I'm actually happy now that I have a, a copy. So um, and that and uh, and that was um, that was all I bought there. Okay. So after so after I was done with the stores at Simloom Square. I decided to just look on my phone and see if there were any other video game stores nearby. Cause I was like, Oh, I was like, maybe somebody got mm -hmm. that special edition in. So then I found another store in a mall that was about, I don't know, like a 10 minute walk from Simlim square. So I went over there. It was a game. It was a store called game marts. Game More marts. of like your okay. game marts ends with this. Oh, here we go. Yep. I got it right. Here. And uh, again, just, it it's more it, it was more like a traditional video game store like, it does look yeah yeah, yeah. it kind of reminded me of a GameStop. it does actually a tiny like yeah. like almost like an airport style GameStop. yeah exactly like small store but it still had ps5 series x mm -hmm. um switch and then um and then like i don't want to say toys but it, you know accessories Flushes and, and stuff. things yeah. like that yeah, stuff like that. So those are toys. Uh, so I went in. Yeah, basically. <laughs> so I went in there. I asked him if they had special edition. He uh, now he was completely different from the other one. He just said flat out, "No." He's like, "We're not getting it." Ooh, and I'm like, "Oh." I was like, "Okay." So, um, so I struck out there too. Uh, <laughs> I didn't buy anything there because it was all current games. And uh, aside from the Switch, I don't think I could play them on my current my you know like I couldn't get any, a no, PS5. Not on PS5. No, no. Yeah. Plus it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't make sense for me to get a PS5 game in Japan. True. Anyway. True. You know, unless they had something specific I was looking yeah. for. Yeah. So, Godzilla over there. Then yeah. Yeah, like uh, yeah, I would love to find a uh, Godzilla game. So my nephew would love that. But uh, <laughs> I actually so somehow that... I have it digitally. And I must have really? just bought it on a whim. Yeah. Oh, interesting. It's not a, it's Wait, not a which good one? game. Uh it's just called Godzilla for the PS4. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because my my nephew at one point had asked me to find him. I forgot what it was. Maybe Godzilla King of the Monsters or something like that. Whatever it was, it was mm -hmm. it was a PS4 game, and I think it I think it only came out in Japan, but it goes for like two or three hundred bucks. No, we got it here, but it was like almost like a limited print. It's not available oh, anymore. Yeah, and yeah. it came out in 2015 actually, and yeah. um, it just called Godzilla. Uh, and like I said, I must maybe have that's just... the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, I must have just saw it and, and purchased it digitally because, hey, Godzilla, I'm in. Um, right. But, yeah, no, finding it now, um, hey, you it's know what? It's pretty much impossible. Let's take a quick peek. Um, Are we going to eBay that? Yeah, just real quick. Uh, Godzilla for the PS4. Oofa. Yeah, I think it just keeps 200, going 200, yeah, mm -hmm. buck 50. Um, yeah, buck, but, buck 50. Oh, hold on. Buck 50 is the lowest I've seen it. $150. For a non-working, mm -hmm. it actually says does not work. Yeah, that sounds that's about right. That's wild. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I just found one for two hundred dollars that says water damage on on the uh, <laughs> on the box. What is this Godzilla versus? Wait a minute, this is new. I've never seen nope. this game before. Oh, look at yeah. I'm gonna buy uh, again. It's Godzilla. Japanese exclusive. It's going for one hundred eighty eight dollars. Mm -hmm. I love the cover. Covers yeah, my nephew, my nephew wants this game really badly, and I'm like, well, unless yeah. I happen to randomly find it for an affordable price. Yeah, not. I mean, I hate to say it. Yeah, unfortunately, you're not going That's to. But just. One. For those yeah. listening, just I need to just real quick to describe this Godzilla versus cover art is gorgeous. Godzilla, Space Godzilla, and King Ghidorah. I mean, the artwork alone is almost worth the yep. price. So, although, uh, but, ooh, although you know what? What'd you find? I just I just found on eBay somebody is selling a PS4 Pro, a one terabyte PS4 Pro, okay. with twenty two games, and one of those games is the Godzilla game complete in box, Dad. Uh, and he said. He's selling all of it for four hundred bucks. I just found it's a, I, I just found yeah. it. It's like the yeah. only game that's in box, right? It's the and only it's a game Call in of box. Duty. Yes. Okay, I'm looking at the same thing. Um, so yeah. there you go. Like that. That would be the way to buy it because that's yeah. probably a more affordable actually, this, way. He's or he's offering some good games actually. Yeah, the got division. Some, got some, got some oh, Star Wars games. Battlefront. You that, got yeah, Call you're right. Duty. That might you be the way to go. Cry four. Mm-hmm. So if you want that Godzilla game, just buy that PS4 Pro with it. <laughs> he's uh, in Poughkeepsie. Ah, he's, he's, he's not far. Yeah, yeah. Save the save, save six thousand shipping. <laughs> there you go. So, um, so right. anyway, yeah, yep. So uh, that was that was my shopping experience this time around. So nothing super exciting, uh, but it's uh, still you know, fun stuff. Yeah, no, you know what it is. It's always again when I'm traveling, I always love trying to get to stores. Oh yeah, just even just to, just even to just experience it, you know that's the that's the thing yeah. it's the experience so that's what it's all about yeah um very very cool stuff with me i, I really didn't uh i mean really the biggest purchase for me and i'll just touch on it because i don't want to spoil not that there's really spoilers but um the nintendo world championship nes edition oh my god the game is one of the best games on the switch as far as just fun replayability it is what it is it's a ton of it's a over 150 or 150 speed run challenges nice and when you know when the game was first announced uh, you know i definitely or i pre-ordered it uh because it's nintendo so it's not going on sale till november so i'm like i don't want to wait that long uh mm -hmm. so um so i picked it up it, it downloaded on thursday this past thursday is when it was available so I thought it was just going to be, again, just a bunch of speed runs. I'm not really into speed runs. I'll do the challenges, have some fun with them. Mm -hmm. I found myself immediately replaying challenges over and over and over. Oh, Multiple. Nice. I mean, I got sucked into it. I, I cannot express how much fun this game is. I cannot express how much fun doing the speed run is. Do yourself a favor, though. Don't, because you can see like speed runs of like the top players and stuff like that. Don't watch those because your head will explode trying to figure out how they're doing things. I I'll mm -hmm. mention this one. There there's this one uh, challenge. It's a Super Mario Brothers 2, our Super Mario Brothers 2. Okay. And what you do is you start as Luigi and you just have to run, grab the red key and open the door. And it's the part okay. where you start off where you have to jump on the flying carpet to jump uh -huh. over the gap, you know, to get over the gap. Yep. So, and you, you you play as Luigi. You can't choose who you play as. And I've gotten like an A plus. You get an S for like absolute perfect, and it's an A plus plus A plus, and it goes down to C. Yeah. So I did it, and then I was able to see some gameplay of other players who somehow, and even when I sit there and watch it, I still can't figure out how they completely bypass the flying carpet and they mm -hmm. jump on the I get the, I forgot what they're called buzzers or whatever, and they jump Rather over the enemies that fly over the gap because Luigi has that large jump, and then they do it. And I'm like, what? How is this possible? So, like, I'm just trying to ignore them. <laughs> so, uh, but nevertheless, uh, just all the runs are amazing. I will give one more spoiler. The Legend um, Challenge for Super Mario Brothers 1, mm -hmm. which is ironic after the week I had, is to okay. complete the game. To oh, wow. run through the entire game. Because Legend nice. Mode is designed to take time. It's a longer challenge. Okay. And I'm like, I've been practicing this all week. Nice. And I still got like an A plus or an A. <laughs> I did okay. not master it. Um, what I will recommend for the North American uh, fans, and right now through the end of July, they are 20% off. Only available, though, if you have a Nintendo Switch Online account. 
So mm -hmm. that is very specific. But this game, you don't have to play with it, but it is a total different experience if you play with the Switch NES controllers. Nice. It, it just it's it feels right uh, for lack okay. of a better term. Well, I'll uh, I'll have that experience when I get my Famicom controllers with my special yes. edition. But the only problem is everything's going to be in Japanese. So, you know, good, I mean, you can they show a preview of the challenge. Mm -hmm. But they, oh no, you can use the control. I'm I'm an idiot. You can use no, the controller. No, no, for, yeah, use, no, you're right. No, it, I can use the controller mind. on the English version. hundred mm -hmm. percent right. You're right. So, That's but in any event, what, whichever one you have, excuse me, uh, you definitely have to play it with this. Yeah, a four, and plus the controllers are awesome. It's it's worth yeah. purchasing. Um. The weekly challenges that they're going to be doing, uh, that's going to keep the game the game going because you earn coins. Every time you, you complete a challenge, you earn coins. And it's those coins you spend to unlock more challenges. And okay. definitely you're going to get to a point where you're going to run out of coins and you have to wait for those weekly challenges or just try and get better with your, with your runs. With the other ones. Okay. So bottom line, again, I don't want to give more to like just some of the challenges I've come across. Metroid can just eat it. Uh -oh. Um, I'm not happy with that, and I, I am saving Balloon Fight for the last row of challenges oh, to fight. do. I love Balloon Fight. I God, I hate Balloon Fight. Love Balloon Fight. Right now, I'm working oh, on man. Excite Bike. Those Excite Bike challenges cool. are kind of tough. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to to playing oh, it yeah. when I get home. My cop, my copy's waiting for me. The only, again, the only criticism I'll give of it, and I hope it's a situation that they did with F Zero Ninety Nine, where it's an update later. You can't mm -hmm. play, there's really no online competition. When you play survival mode, you're playing against seven other ghost runs of other uh, people online. So you're not actually playing them live, which I get. I'm, I'm sure it would just be okay. to have someone, but that's still, it's still fun to play. But yeah. the co-op is all couch co-op. You get up to eight people, but it's couch co-op. Mm -hmm. Maybe down the road, and I get it. If you're doing speed runs, the lag and everything, mm -hmm. that might just be hard to, to get uh, proper. Yeah, but if you can get people in the same room with you, this is a party game like no other. So definitely check it out. Uh, one more thing I picked up and I caught this during Prime, our Prime days mm -hmm. that were last week. Optimus Prime days. Yes. Oh, let's give a shout out and a, a moment of silence for Optimus Prime. All right. right, he's not dead. He was though for a little while until you're watching an episode, and then next week on the Transformers, the return of Optimus Prime. What? <laughs> What's going on? Because, because Rodimus Prime sucked. I hate, loved Hot Rod, hate Rodimus Prime. Yeah. Don't know how that worked. But yeah. in any event, I picked up a Backbone One controller. Ah, uh, very nice. For the iPhone. And this thing is a must buy. If you play mobile games, especially mm -hmm. now that Ant this the only reason why I bought this is because of Ant Stream Arcade. Now uh, that it's available on iOS. And mm -hmm. this works perfectly with oh, Anstream nice. Arcade. That's great. And this is a must buy for anyone who plays a lot of uh games on your mobile devices. Okay. It's normally 100 bucks, it was on sale for 70, so pulled the trigger Good on that. Prime it's day. very comfortable. Here it is right here. Um very comfortable. Nice. You can plug it in to use it for your computer, but I think there's something weird with it where you have to like subscribe to their backbone plus service to do that i might be wrong on that don't hold me to it but it extends to it you know for the, depending on the size of your phone that you have mm -hmm. uh the buttons are very responsive and again for at least and stream arcade because that's really the only game i play on my on my iphone mm -hmm. th a must a must purchase so i'm very happy that i got this so very cool Okay, very and cool. And other than that, that's pretty much about it. So All right. I think good with purchases. That, yeah, uh, I think with that, we'll move on. We'll just kind of get right into it. Uh, it's going to be a short segment, Game of the Week. Ah, Game of the, yeah, it's going to be a very short segment uh, for, for a very specific reason. Uh, I couldn't play it. So, <laughs> And I, the uh, apparently uh, the uh, United States uh, math uh, educational system failed me, or I failed it terribly because I... Yeah. Yikes. So, uh, so, so this week's game of the week, uh, I, it was my choice, and I had picked Donkey Kong Junior Math uh, for the NES because it had just gotten added to the uh, Switch Online. I feel like that was a and, secondary reason why you chose it. Well, yeah, that was the secondary reason. The other reason why I chose it is because I wanted I wanted Larry to play a game doing math while I was traveling because I knew that. 
he was going to have to do the live stream for this <laughs> um this coming you know, well coming up this week so um, every thursday 7 p.m eastern on youtube maybe others uh other streaming platforms but for right now youtube i'm looking into that yeah. uh, i just discovered that this morning um and uh, sometimes it'll be live this one i have to do live uh, i will do yeah. this one live no 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 you need to do this one live because my people need to witness your math skills oh my parents are gonna be so disappointed in me <laughs> or lack of math skills because my parents are so good at math like like they could have been accountants if they didn't do what they did for uh, their livings. Me, I don't know how I did not get the math gene in my family. Uh, it just you, to you, this day, you didn't apply yourself. That's all. I'm, I knew one day we were going to carry calculators all the time with us. So who yeah. needs it? And you probably still mess it up, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. I still, if I have to add, I'm still. I might have no. to take my shoes off every now and again. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is why we don't leave you to do the bill when we go. <laughs> if only. Yeah. It's still a fun game, though. I did have it growing up, shockingly. And mm -hmm. it's it's very straightforward. It's going to be a short stream, folks, on Thursday. Um, it's just literally, really, the kind of the, the fun of the game is two-player. Is a two-player game. Yeah. Because the, the main part of the game has like almost like traditional Donkey Kong Jr. board with all the vines and everything. But then up on top is a sum or a difference, an answer. It yeah. depends on whatever. And you have to get to that number. And yes. if you play just one player, it's just you just trying to do the math. The but math. If, if you play with two players, that's where the race goes. Mm -hmm. And what happens is on the vines, kind of like where the fruit used to be, are different numbers from zero to yep. nine. And then on the bottom, on the little islands, are the, uh, you know, what do they call them? Um, there's a term uh, for them, and I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Yes. And uh, so then you just have to jump around, get the numbers, do the math, and get to the target. So this is definitely something that we'll maybe maybe down the road we'll definitely do. Or maybe at the Retro Expo, um, you know, we can We're do a two-player. Donkey Kong Jr. Showdown? We can do that, which happens to be uh, August 9th through the 11th at the Cradle of Aviation in Uniondale, Long Island, New York. Get your tickets, liretro.com. Uh, yep. And actually, I'll take this moment to just uh, plug. I'm going to be on two other podcasts uh, in the near future, uh, plugging this show and the Retro Expo. So uh, you nice. can check me out on Keep Moving Forward with Anthony DiDomenico on Monday, uh, July 29th. And I'll be on Circling the Drain podcast August 7th. Uh, you can catch those live. We'll, we'll share the feeds. And of course, you'll catch them on the regular audio later on. Nice. Um, so even though it's straight math, it's still a fun game. It's, it's an educational game. Absolutely. It's a black box yes, game, which I still find weird. Uh, yes, but it was, it's part of history and definitely part of my history growing up. Yeah. So... Um... Yeah, there's not much else to say to it. I, I, you know, I remember. I don't know if I, I, I don't know if I owned it or if I rented it. I, I definitely, I definitely remember playing it. <laughs> um, but I'd like to think it was something that I rented and not owned, because I can't. It's imagine. such a ah. weird game. Oh, I want to rent yeah. this this educational math game. What? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and yeah, but thinking back to my childhood, that might sound right to me that's so, you, you're right well because well think about the other the other option of it is asking your parents to buy it for you you know it's like mommy daddy i really want donkey kong jr math what but like of all games you would think that'd be one that they would want to buy you right of course because, which is by why i got you uh yeah you probably well you needed it so wow so here's a little history on how i heard that here's a little and you're right here's a little history on Kong junior math i didn't realize it came out on the on the famicom in 83 and we got it wow. 86 wow okay. yeah um it's the only game as we mentioned the only educational game in like in that black box series mm -hmm. which some people uh say is the reason why it was not successful it was available, this I do remember, it was available on the Virtual Console for the Wii and the Wii U. Uh, the Switch just recently got it. Okay. I didn't, I forgot it was part of the um, NES games that you were able to unlock in Animal Crossing on the GameCube. Yes, yes it was. Well, that's interesting. I forgot about that part. Uh, yep, total commercial failure. Is there any numbers here like sales? I can't pull up anything right now as far as sales. Uh, rankings, though, oof, uh, IGN gave it a 3 out of 10. GameSpot gave it a 3 out of 10. 
game ranking well, 32%. There's, there's really there's really nothing to it there really is not anything to it yeah yeah there really is anything to it so like i said i kind of i kind of just picked it as a joke for this week for you oh no it was it's still fun to play yeah so uh, uh and i'm looking forward to seeing like i said i'm looking forward to seeing the playback of your stream since i won't be able to see it live but uh <laughs> the playback of it just to see how you did <laughs> trust me it's a short enough stream you might be able to yeah. join anyway. I know what's going on, yeah. but you might be able to join because it's That's so That's very true. And, poor, <laughs> and, and can I just point out poor Donkey Kong Jr., who, uh, you know, he did survive the math game, but then only wound up in um, the first Mario Kart and then kind of disappeared after He that. did kind of disappear after a while. You're right. Yeah. Oh, well. But so. nevertheless, very fun game, very original game. And, yes, it will be uh, interesting to see if I got to find a working calculator uh, for the live stream. So. Uh, and I wish you the best of luck with that. <laughs> Thank you very much. All so, right. So with the next, uh, I think, uh, which I like this idea. So please don't get me wrong and please bring more to us. And the more obscure, the better. But we have another fan suggested game of the week. Oh, and we do. Um, yeah, because last week, my nephew Ryan uh, suggested Super yes. Mario Brothers, which I, I, again, I talked about it on the live stream. It was almost an hour and a half I did on the live stream. Yeah. Uh, I did get through the game. Uh, yeah. It definitely got challenging near the end. I, especially. Well, you know what? I was going to say I completely missed it, but I did I did pop in for you a did. couple of minutes at the end. You did. Uh, especially because near the end of the game, I thought the cart was going to start glitching out. So nice. it was really getting nerve-wracking there. Uh, and then I showed off some other versions of the game, like the Super Mario mm -hmm. All-Stars, Su uh, Super Mario Brothers uh, Deluxe for the Game Boy Color and stuff. Um, so Ryan suggested that game. Awesome. So uh, our suggestion this week is actually from a good friend of ours, Mario, our right. Master System Guru. Uh -oh. And uh, who also happens to live downstairs from me. Yeah. And I, yes, we were putting out the garbage and he was talking about how he would love to see us play the immortal. The so immortal. We, uh, yes, the immortal, okay. which is available on various systems actually also just came out recently on newer platforms. Uh, it does happen to be, and again, it's not being picked because of the system. It just happens to be on the system. It is on the NES uh, online, the uh, Nintendo Switch online NES. Oh, perfect. So that would probably be the one that I play. Uh, I think that'll be the one. That'll also be the one I play. Sorry. Yeah. No uh, Master System version for me. Don't, don't be sorry for that. No, I don't think it's on the Master System, to be honest with you. But um, oh. I think it was on. You made it sound like, I thought I thought that's why you were saying. Oh, no, no, no. I was just saying because he's okay. a guru. No, got it, it was... got it, got it. Actually, it's available on the Apple 2GS, the Amiga, the Atari ST, DOS, NES, mm. Genesis, and Switch. It okay. might be on one of the Genesis minis. Don't hold me to that. I don't remember. But okay. Oh, it's also available on the Evercade. It's on the Pico Collection 1 on oh, the Evercade as well. So there's... Do you, do you have that one? Good question. Pico what? Collection 1? I do not. Okay. That is a negative. So but I'll play then, the NES version. NES version it is. Yep. So um, so we'll check that out. And again, again uh, obscure. And I like that. We like that. So we'll check that out. That will be this week's Game of the Week. Very cool. Um, and with that, basically, we're going to wrap it up. I know, Ant, you're, you got your travels. You're busy. So I don't want to hold you up. Ant, uh, where can they find us? All right, you guys can, well, you can find me on the other side of the world, but if you're talking about the show, you can find us on facebook.com slash for Retro Gamers Podcast, on Instagram at Retro Gamers Podcast, on Twitter yes. at Retro Gamers Pod. You can listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts. You can watch us on YouTube and Spotify at Retro Gamers Podcast, or you can email us at email at theretrogamers.com. Yes, and definitely start sending some suggestions for Game of the Week. Like we said, a little bit more uh, obscure, the better. And try not to do something that's like like a nine hundred dollar game or, or like something that's like hasn't been in print in a while. But yeah, you know, don't tell, don't tell don't tell us to play Godzilla. Well, <laughs> I can. I can. Really am buying that. Well, I you can. Play. I can. <laughs> yeah, that's good. All right, and enjoy your safe travels. All right, thank you. And I will not be here next week. So, that's right. Uh, I so. I I leave the show in your very capable hands. Yes, we do have a guest. I don't want to mention who it is just in case things happen to change. change. But yes, I do have someone lined up for next week, which if it works out, it's going to be a very fun, very fun ex uh, episode. Might be very Xbox heavy, which might be fun for some people. Mm, so, I, ooh, I think I might know who it is. <laughs> and folks, with that, we'll catch you everywhere next week on the Retro Gamers Podcast.